Well, hey, it's 5 p.m. on Friday, and we are so glad that you're with us for this whole care community check-in, where we always, we want to remind you that God gave you a soul, but he also gave you a mind and a body and relationships and purpose and all that stuff he wants you to develop and press into as uh, you're growing with him. And tonight is guys' night, or it's men's night. That's right. That's right. Kyle's joining me again. Excited to do that. There was ladies' night Wednesday, men's night on Friday. Uh, we are glad you're here. And I wanted to remind you about something, something Kyle and I uh, talk about quite frequently. There's a, a really important principle that we believe at Pulpit Rock, that we as believers should never drift very far from the gospel. Hmm. Like the gospel is the, not just the foundation for our faith, but there's an anchoring piece to it. And I think all of us, I, I know this is true of myself, we tend to make things a little bit more complicated. And there's something about returning to the simplicity of the gospel that's so important. And one of the things also that we always say here is there's a few different versions of the gospel, and I'm sure that you've heard these or you could recognize them. There's a, a version of the gospel that we would all kind of say is not the real thing, but is the no grace gospel that's works-based. It's all about what we do for God. Um, and, but then there's also this version that kind of creeps into our heart, which we'll call the partial grace gospel. And it's this idea that God has grace for us but we kind of need to add our efforts to his grace, and that's what restores our relationship. You know, what we're really big on here at Pulpit Rock, I would describe as just the full grace gospel. And there's something about returning to that that is reorienting, that is challenging. It's all over scripture, but it's this idea that God does it all, that in our relationship with God, that he has restored everything for us. Again, you look right in Romans 8. You could read the whole chapter. That's a great chapter to read. But therefore, there's now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, which is incredible. But the reason matters. It says, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. And there's nothing we did in that equation. It was all his work. And th there's something about just kind of, for me, I, I tend to drift from that, and I start kind of adding my efforts and start even internally thinking about that. And so I, my question for you, Kyle, is this, like, this sounds so simple as to say, well, just stay close to the gospel, you know, stay focused on that. Right. But how have you seen that play out in your life uh, as you've tried to grow and develop and mature and all that sort of stuff, just the simplicity of the gospel being an anchor for you? Yeah, and it is. It seems so simple. I, I think the mistake that I, I make at times as I think about the gospel as this theological truth or it's something that uh, has changed the consequences of, of my yeah. behaviors or the things that I've done rather than this uh, good news that God at all times and always is for me, is working for my good. And even more than that, this desire that I have in myself to become like him and to, to change and transform in ways that would um, honor God, is that it is his work to do in me. Um, and certainly there's a participation, but for me, I carry the weight of feeling like I have to do it all and I have to do it really well. And I, you know, I don't know about you, but in this season, th there's something that feels heightened in that yeah. where I feel like I'm maybe failing on a couple different fronts and I have to be the best dad and I have to lean into uh, being you know, the best husband and I want to do really great at my job. And uh, it's not just a desire to do well in those. There's a piece of that that feels like I have to do it to please God, to, to earn, to become, to, like if I let off the gas a little bit in this season, yeah. that maybe this work or progress that God's doing in me might be unmade or kind of yeah. reset. Yeah, I relate to that. You know, like this is true that, uh, you know, I like to be very productive in life. I like to, you know, take care of myself, be healthy and do a lot of activities and fun stuff. And this is a season where it's like, I, I'm not as productive as I would like to be. I'm sitting around the house, we just eat all the time, we just watch too many movies and shows, and uh, you know, there's a, a piece of that that you find out real quickly how much of your identity is wrapped up in yes. what you produce, yes. um, and how much of your identity is wrapped up in God's love for you. Yeah, and I think identity is such a great word because, you know, there is this question of who are we, are, you know, are, are we what we do and what we produce and, you know, how we are, you know, seen by others. Um, there, it is so easy to kind of slip into that trap. And I think 
what does it mean to be Kyle in this world? That identity piece is central to it. And the good news, the gospel, is that that identity is not formed on my effort, but in what God says is true about me. You know, there's this quote that I love uh, from Dave Lomas. It's uh, from a book, The Truest Thing About You. And he says, you will not find your identity in what you have, but in who has you. You will not find your identity in what you do, but in what has been done for you. And you will not find your identity in what you desire, but in who has desired, at infinite cost to himself, a relationship with you. I, mean, yeah. I just, I think that nails it. And so the thing that is so freeing that gives such peace about the gospel is knowing that there is a God who loves me, who is for me in every way. There is nothing left to gain. There's nothing left to earn. And so then all the things that I'm wanting to do to kind of follow him, they flow out of this response, this joy-filled response of, gosh, I'm so loved, and there's something that I want to do in response to that rather than something I need to fight for and make sure I don't mess up. Yeah, and that's, that's kind of our encouragement to you today is you're probably feeling in this season a little bit of loss of identity, yeah. and I don't know what that looks like for you. It's different for all of us because we have our identities wrapped up in all sorts of stuff. You know, the answer is not to fight to reclaim those things that we maybe have lost. But I think the answer is to put our full faith in the full grace gospel, that our identity is in his love for us and that he is for us. And it's as simple as that. And so uh, that's our encouragement for you today as you're navigating the season is just to be connected and stay connected to the gospel. It is all grace. God is very much for you. Uh, and it, you got to stay very connected to that. Now, I have a recommendation for you. Okay. This one I'm really excited about. Uh, there is a, I'm sure you're familiar with TED Talks. They you know, happen all the time. Uh, there's one of my all-time favorite TED Talks. It's 12 minutes long, but it is worth every minute. That's I want to encourage you. All-time like, favorite. All, well, it's in my top five. All right. right. So uh, there, it's a TED Talk by a guy named Sean Acor, yeah. and it's called The Happy Secret to Better Work. Now, I know that title doesn't sound really excited, but just watch this 12-minute TED Talk. You go to the TED website, and you Google Sean Acor. We're going to put the image up here. Uh, Take a picture of it, write it down, Sean Acor, The Happy Secret to Better Work. And there's something about the way he frames how attitude affects our ability to succeed in life that is just so, so delightful and so helpful, I think, for all of us. So that is the recommendation for the, for the day. Hey, Kyle, will you do a blessing over this community? Sure. Yeah. Father God, we uh, are grateful for the ways that you are for us in every way. Um, Thank you for the ways that you graciously lead us. I pray even in this season that you would use the uniqueness of it to unmake the identity uh, that is false in us. Would we receive just as an invitation this uh, truth that you are for us, that you love us, and will we base all of who we are Upon that truth and that good news. Amen. Amen. So excited about uh, this weekend, Sunday 9 and 1030, we're going to have our live uh, streamed worship services. Join us there. Feel free to post comments in the chat. We love that sort of thing. And then next week, we're going to do it all again. We're going to have the whole care check-ins and the kids' ministry check-ins and the student ministry check-ins, yeah. which are amazing yeah, right There's now, good stuff right? happening so, right now. So many good things. So check all that stuff out in this archive so you can go back and watch whatever you've missed. Uh, what we most want you to hear is just this, press into everything God created you to be. He is for you and he's for you even now even when life is very different i love you people i'll see you soon